Here's my question for you. The Knicks are 11 and two in January. In the last 16 games, first in defensive rating by like a mile. Like they are, they have been the best defensive team now for more than a month. Is Knicks culture the new Heat culture? Because <laughs> the Heat, the Heat got annihilated tonight by Boston. Now, granted, you know whatever it's the Heat, it's the regular season. But the Knicks have done their own version of what the Heat did. The type of players the Heat target and go after, and the type of people they put together. And the Knicks have basically said to everybody, like, you have to be able to play defense to play for the Knicks. Yeah, you have to play hard. And you just have to be diving for balls and you be able to switch and just fight. And if you can't do that, you're not playing. So they added OG. They're 11 and two in January. They feel like they're a trade away from being kind of a nightmare first round opponent. And I'm starting, I have Knicks fans in my life who are beaten down, who don't want to believe, who don't want to get sucked in. And all of them are like, I really like this team. I really like where this is going. I am super happy as a Knicks fan right now. Where do you stand? I think they're a trade away from being something much more dangerous, but they're already a nightmare first round opponent. This is a team that no one should want to play in the regular season or the playoffs because the Knicks, I think what their, what their defining characteristic is, is they do not fuck around. They show up, they play hard, they have intense focus, they don't give you things. And yeah, there's there's some times where their offense like kind of spins its wheels or it's like a little too much Julius Randle time or maybe yeah. like a little undersized on the perimeter with some of their groups. But they give a shit in a league where there's like a lot of unserious teams in the regular season. And you could see it in this one that the Nuggets were not prepared for this level of physicality in a random January regular season game, even during rivalry week registered trademark. I don't know what the Nuggets Knicks rivalry <laughs> is, but there must be one somewhere on the books. Nuggets Knicks, let me think. Yeah, no, I'm out of ideas. I don't and, know how that one Nuggets, works. Nuggets at the end of a road trip. And it was like one of the, they were like in the pickup game where there was that one guy on the other team trying too hard and guarding everybody <laughs> full court. And they're like, dude, I'm hung well, over. Can you leave me alone? Well, that guy was OG Ananobi. And I think he's going to be in Jamal Murray's nightmares for a really long time. Like he, he is such a big part of how the Knicks physicality can just rock you on your axis as a team. Yeah. And I've, I've been thinking about this too with, with the way defense is officiated right now and just how the way offense is exploding. The real defensive difference makers, they just feel immensely valuable and even far and away than they did before, far and away more than they did before. And it might only be like three or four guys in terms of perimeter players who can actually do stuff like this. And I think OG is clearly one of them. He can neutralize a matchup. He can zero out a player as dangerous as Jamal Murray. And if you can get one of those guys or develop one of those guys, that is a transformational experience for your team. So that's why the Knicks were good and they were competent, but now they're really dangerous. They're a team that if you're a contender and you see the Knicks as your first round opponent, they could ruin your season really easily, even if they themselves aren't necessarily a favorite or, or you know co-favorite to win the title. We did the, didn't we do the, uh, I came on, were you on that pod? Yeah, yeah, it for the emergency trade pod. The emergency pod, it was me, you and Varia, right? Absolutely. And we all liked the trade for the Knicks. And we all thought OG was the best part in the trade. And we all thought the theory of the trade we liked. Since we did that pot, I, I think the trade has turned out way better than I thought. And I think the thing that I don't think we, none of us gave enough credit to is like, you're kind of wasting that dude on like a 500 team or a team that, you know, doesn't have that, this kind of identity. Now he just makes sense on this team. When you think about them in the playoffs, I think one of the things that's scary about them is pick pick the the team. You could probably throw OG at whoever the problem is. Yeah. Like, could he Basically guard Embiid? Basically one to five. He could has. he guard Embiid in a series? Yeah. Like, I think he actually could. Tatum, Brown, um, nobody guards Yana, Giannis, but he could at least try to take, tra take uh, you know, charges from him. Miami, you could throw him on anyone in that team and you're going down the line. So now, now that they have that, I want to know what the next trade is because they have to trade Fournier now. They're pretty close. And Fournier is making 18. They can get to basically 20, 22, 24 in a trade and get one more guy. But for me, it has to be a guy that fits into what they've created. Yeah. Like, it can't be like, oh, we can finally, we have a, we have a mulligan here. We can acquire Zach Levine. We can get away with one guy who doesn't play defense. I don't think they want to be that way. I think they want to, from what I've seen, what what Tibbs and Tibbs seems super happy oh lately. 
<laughs> the he look just on wants... his face when he sat down at the press conference tonight, it was like it was like the serial killer at the end of the movie about to give his monologue in the interrogation right. room. That's the what end it was. of the Fincher miniseries. <laughs> yeah, I. This is the team he wants. So anyone else they trade for, I think, has to come in and have that same kind of intensity. I maybe it's Dejounte Murray. I don't know. I don't. He's another one that I wonder in the right kind of atmosphere could he rekindle some of the defense we saw from him in San Antonio. We've not seen in Atlanta, but um, they're clearly going to make a. Make a deal. I think the crowd really helps too for the type of team they have. And I'm, I think I'm going to go next week, next weekend because we're in New York for the rewatchables, the live show, and nice. they're playing the Lakers on Saturday. I want to see it. I want to, you know, I've seen that crowd in various stages of uh, e- either just complete sadness, bitterness, or kind of like over hopefulness based that, but compared to what the actual product is, but. They're just dying to have a team they like, and it seems like they like this team. Rando is the X factor. Yeah, it can be a, he can be a lot, but in games like this, he's flexing on Nikola Jokic, getting putbacks. Right, like yeah. when, when he when his game is properly aligned and relatively in balance, we know who he can be when he's just hitting every jumper. That's great, but it's more about like the replicability of how physical he can be, how dominant he can be going to the basket. In addition to that, kind of. Uh, yo-yoing pull on a defense from being able to shoot. So if he can do a little of all those things, and Jalen Brunson has just been such an efficient driver of that offense. Such, yeah. So good at getting into the lane, creating problems, and also another one of these guys who's just a really successful emerging three-point shooter at, at pretty good volume this season. They're so dangerous. They're, they're, re- they're really hard to play, even apparently when they're down to their third string center. You know, Jericho Sims is out there giving Nikola Jokic the best he's got, and that's good enough to win by nearly 40 points. And some Precious. Precious is getting thrown out there. Here, Precious! <laughs> little Silence of the Lambs action. <laughs> um, right now, the Knicks are fourth. That would put them in uh, a Cleveland Knicks series that I'm not sure I want. <laughs> I don't think the Cavs want up. it either. Yeah, yeah I, would, I think we should shake the snow globe on that one. But um, it would be really fun if Philly had just bounced back a tiny bit and all of a sudden... Cleveland kept ascending, and then we could just get Knicks Philly in round one with just an absolute shitload of pressure. 